So, uh, this morning we asked if time is real, and when I'm not playing Phenomenologist, my favorite game is to get rid of all of space-time, basically looking for a formulation of laws of physics without space-time at all, in which space-time only emerges in some regimes and only as a kind of convenient but unnecessary uh, abstraction from properties of processes. Um, the main basis for me in this intuition is that what we call geometric space-time observables are actually not primitive, in the sense that whenever you speak of a space-time observable, operatively it involves a procedure which also has some stages of particle detection. So in my understanding these are observables of a lower rank than the ones we have, say, in an S-matrix setup in quantum field theory. And an example is the classic case of Alice wanting to determine her distance from a mirror. Um, to some extent, this intuition finds space in some toy models of particles in a quantum space-time where by the end of the story we discover that the observable properties of the model are actually properties you can formulate in a classical space-time but endowing the particles with new properties. And interestingly, these new properties are governed most of the time by quantum group versions of relativistic symmetries. Uh, this is also in works with Flavio Mercati, who was also here. Um, and it's, it's a rather common finding, also in loop quantum gravity, in some applications of the formalisms, you see uh, very cleanly the emergence of quantum group structures for the description of the laws of transformation between reference frames, and this is also in works by Eugenio Bianchi and Carlo Rovelli, who both are also here. Um, I was... Uh, quite stunned at a, actually at a workshop that was FXI funded when I met for the first time Philip Hearn and Marcus Muller and learned about their studies showing that with some apparently robust assumptions for the quantum communications of two agents in a protocol for reference frame synchronization, uh, they were getting out essentially for free automatically Lorentz transformations as the law of connection of the two reference frames without at any stage having introduced a space-time for this uh, protocol analysis. I'm presently working on a FQXI funded project which was proposed together with Philip Hearn and at present also involves Flavio Mercati which basically tries to uh, find a road at the interface of those concepts I had on the previous slide. So we are asking questions like, uh, what, which, in which way we should change the assumptions of the hern muller analysis so that we get out of it not a classical Lorentz group connecting the reference frame, but a quantum group version. Um, and if such a scenario, we, if we find such a scenario, we don't have it yet, to be fair, uh, we would then would like to understand how that affects agency, whether in particular we are tempted by the concept that this might limit agency in some sense, if you have a quantum group structure, and also uh, whether the abstraction of a space-time that these agents will formulate on the basis of this procedure of uh, ref reference frame synchronization, uh, whether that picture depends on the nature of the probes they use in their uh, quantum communication. And just not to be too much out of character, my last comment is on real data. And uh, this shows uh, the image of a quasar as seen uh, by using different probes. Um, and you can see, probably not from your seat, that with lower energy probe, the image is sharper. And if this was not the result of systematic errors, which probably is, 
chances are it is systematic errors, but I'm using it anyway to illustrate a, a little bit of this idea that the space-time picture an agent makes up, abstraction, uh, depends on the nature of the probes it, it uses. In this case, it would have the fuzziness of the point associated to the quasar depending on the uh, energy of the probes used. And I stop here. Thank you. Thank you.